So not only does a holistic and integrative approach heal the body, a holistic and integrative approach heals a society, heals a civilization. And it is time for us to take an integrative approach to healing America. And so I ask myself, what are the psychological things that we have to look at? What are the emotional places we have to go to? And what are the spiritual places within ourselves that we have to dig deep down into in order to transform all that suffering? First of all, all that psychological, like where did all this stuff come from? How did this happen? And it's not that hard once you put it all together. It all started about 40 years ago. This economic theory was proffered to us. It was called trickle-down economics. And this system of economics has embedded itself, not only in our financial institutions. It has corrupted our government, and it has hijacked our value system in this country. Now, before that, I'm not saying everything was perfect, but when I was growing up, the U.S. corporation was expected to care. The U.S. corporation was expected to care about something more than its fiduciary responsibility to its stockholders. It was expected to realize that there are more stakeholders than just stockholders. The stakeholders are the entire community. The stakeholders are the workers. The stakeholders are the environment. In fact, Everybody in America, in a way, is a stakeholder in what happens in corporate America. This influences us. This affects our lives. And yet, prior, even though prior to this trickle-down economic theory, the corporation was expected. Somebody works for that corporation, they worked there for decades, and the corporation was expected to care whether or not that person had a dignified retirement. But once trickle-down economics took hold, no, 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 no. All that the corporation was expected to do was to have fiduciary responsibility to its own stockholders. Now, what do you call a person who just doesn't care? What do you call a person who has no sense of morals or ethics, who has no sense of moral responsibility to anyone but themselves? What do we call that person? <laughs> what did that person say? <laughs> oh, honey, he is so just the symptom. You call that person a sociopath. And what do you call an economic system that does not care? What do you call an economic system that has no sense of moral or ethical responsibility to anything other than its own short-term profits and bottom line? You call it a sociopathic economic system. And a sociopathic economic system that has hijacked the moral values of this country, a sociopathic economic system that has corrupted the government of this country, has become, for the people of this country, an oppressive force. We have a tyrannous economic system. It is time for a revolution of consciousness. <laughs> now, we know about revolution in this country because we were born of one. In 1776, some very, very brave men signed the Declaration of Independence. And with that Declaration of Independence, they established America's mission statement. And with the establishment of that mission statement, they repudiated, they repudiated a social and economic system that had prevailed within Europe for centuries. And that was called aristocracy. And in an aristocracy, in a monarchy, the idea is that there's a king or a queen and there are few rich friends. And those few rich friends, the upper classes, the aristocracy, they are entitled to everything. They are entitled to the land, and they were entitled to education, and they were entitled to wealth. They were entitled to wealth creation. They were entitled to all of the material means by which to actualize their dreams. And nobody else was. Everybody else was a little more than a serf. It's not a slave, but neither is it a free person. And so what happened in 1776 is that we repudiated aristocracy. And these men signed this Declaration of Independence instead saying, all men are created equal. And God gave all men the unalienable rights of life and of liberty and of the pursuit of happiness. And that governments are established to secure those rights. Now, they were risking their lives to sign that declaration because if the British had won the war, those men would have been hanged. They would have been executed as traitors. Now, with the signing of that declaration, they repudiated an aristocracy. What has happened in our country is that we have reverted to an aristocratic situation, and it is time to repudiate it again.